The motor does work, the fans work, hopefully the electronics work. But like I said, we're not interested in doing anything with the motor, so the motor is being set aside. Okay, there are three bearings in here. The bearings are held in with some internal snap rings right there. And there's a bearing in the center here. The last thing I was going to remove is this little heat sink uh, cover that's on the very tip of the uh, pump. And the only thing I noticed about this is it is as full of this kind of powdered carbon stuff. Uh, in fact, the entire pump has like a, ca a carbon powder throughout the entire pump. The bearings are pretty much impossible to remove. And from the looks of it, special tools are required there's a bearing uh, cap right here that is held in with two millimeter screws and those are so tight I basically stripped two of my Allen wrenches trying to remove them. So basically this pump is pretty much unserviceable. So the only thing I can really do is to clean this out. I would not use any solvents whatsoever in cleaning this pump because I'm afraid if, of any solvents getting down into the bearings that are in here and washing away any lubricants that might be left in the bearing. So I'm just going to use a handful of Q-tips and uh, clean this out as best as I can. I'm going to maybe take this out in my shop and gently use some compressed air and blow uh, some of these uh, parts out. There are some uh, little rubber sills inside of here, some check valves that you got to be careful with not to uh, dislodge. So I'm going to clean this up and reassemble it and then uh, evaluate my next step. For what it was worth, all this was blown out. Uh, quite a bit of garbage came out of this pump. There's no way to relube any of the bearings. The bearings are sealed. Uh, the center bearing it, I can, it just feels really dry, like the lubricant is already gone. And then these three other bearings here, there's just no way to get any lubrication down in there. They're sealed, and getting them out just looks like a pain. So if you do have one of these low-profile uh, scroll pumps, it looks like if you want to have it serviced, you have to send it back to the manufacturer. But we're going to go ahead and reassemble this. Uh, so we're going to start with the top here. So we're going to get the gasket, put the gasket back in, back into place, and we're going to go ahead and put this back on and put all the screws back. We're ready to assemble this. So this piece right here, this goes on to the pump. This piece right here will go over it. So just so we get the right orientation, we can put this on here. And if you remember, this is our exhaust. So we, we mark this EX. So that goes on like that. So if we take this off, this will give us the orientation we need just like that. So we need to move the shaft here. So this curved piece is at six o'clock. So this curved piece has to be at six o'clock. And then these bearings have to be at six o'clock. Then each one of these bearings have to be at six o'clock. So if everything is at six o'clock, it should slide on just fine. Before we put the top on here, remember our gasket, we got to put that back into place. So we got to lay that down inside this channel. Make sure there's nothing that can get pinched. So now we have to make sure that our holes here are at six o'clock and our pins are at six o'clock. 
So if everything is at six o'clock, this thing should go on just fine. Then we just have to line up all the little alignment pins that's in the motor to line them up with the pump. And we can just use a mallet just to gently line, push the pins into place. Just like that. The next thing we're going to do is put all six screws back into place that holds the pump against the motor. I have everything tightened up. The pump is now assembled to the motor and what I'm going to do is I took off this rear plate right here and I'm just going to turn the motor by hand to make sure that the pump turns without any binding. And you can see they also have another security tape right there that I broke. So Everything seems to be operating just fine. Nothing's binding up. So I can put it, I can go ahead and put this back together again. Put this rear cover back on. And I can go ahead and reattach the motor back onto the chassis and test it and see what happens. Here's our chassis. We're going to put the fans down on the bottom here, and here's our exhaust port. So the exhaust port is right here. So we got to make sure we put the line the exhaust port up along with all the mounts here at the same time. And that's on the chassis now. So this is pretty much just to put everything back together again on how it was. So if we if we do everything in reverse order, well, so we don't have to move this around, I'm just gonna go ahead and put all the nuts back onto the, the bottom mounts. So I'm gonna do that. And then we got all the electrical wires to do. Now, if you remember the struggles we had on taking these these nuts off because it's so because these nuts were right up against the pump, we're just going to put the nut back onto the pump like so. Get the open end wrench. We apply some pressure with our finger, and we're just going to turn these back as I'm pushing down. Now that the nuts are put into place, we can go ahead and replace this. Now, these will show you the direction of, of the fan. So this is the front fan that turns this direction and blows that way. So we've got to just have, get the long screws that go all the way through the fan into the chassis. And we're gonna flip this all the way around. And we have our wires to contend with. Yellow goes to yellow. And purple goes to purple. And green goes to green. And then we have the plug right here. And then we have our little wire ties just to keep the wires from out of the way. So one was right here. And another one is right over here in the corner.
Then we have the rear fan. And it also shows the direction of travel going out the back end there. And then we have the case. And we have the screws go back in each corner and in the sides. And I must have done something right because I don't have any extra parts left over. Okay, so this pump is all back together again. I'll have to review the tape to see what the uh, original vacuum settings were. I think I ran this like for a half an hour. So we'll hook this up to the gauge and we'll have to see if there's any change just from cleaning it out. I'd like to be an optimist and say that there might be a change, but I don't think it's going to be much of a change at all. Well, it was easier for me to test this with removing the case so I wouldn't have to use a hose. So my uh, Micron meter is hooked up to the vacuum pump, so we're going to go ahead and start this up. Last time we ran it for 20 minutes. At 10 minutes, we're at 31 or 3,000 millitor. After 20 minutes of running, we got down to 1,800 and about 29 millitors. Before it got down to 1,029 millitors, so looks like whatever I did didn't help at all. And so, low pro these low profile vacuum pumps just, I don't think, are worth it. Since we can't get parts for them, they're proprietary, you have to send the pumps in to the manufacturer. And they, you know, they do have a pricing sheet of how much it costs. We're going to go ahead and take a look at that. This is the price sheet from Scroll Labs the makers of the low profile pump that Harvest Right once used. Harvest Right no longer works with Scroll Labs. So if the pump was under warranty uh, for one year, there is no uh, price to you. Uh, I don't know who would pay for the shipping charges, but the turnaround time is 10 days. If it's out of warranty, just for them to look at it, it's gonna be a five day turnaround time and the charge is $225 plus shipping and handling. If it's out of warranty, here's what they'll do. Ten, it's gonna be, a uh, once again, a 10-day turnaround. They're gonna charge you uh, $495 for that. But basically, just to do the inspection is $225. And then I guess to do the repairs is gonna be an additional $495 to do a rebuild and this is what they're going to do in that rebuild 15 day turnaround will be $670 plus shipping and handling now if the pump is totally trashed you can use it to it for a trade-in looking at a 10 day turnaround they will give you a 30 percent discount for a price of a new pump now, if you're wondering about a price of a new pump, I also have that information. The price for a replacement uh, pump is contained within this email I received from Scroll Labs. And they're basically saying that this is a part number that they sold to Harvest Right. And the list price for a pump is $1,299. And they're not saying it's a guaranteed 30% trade-in, but they're saying it depends on the condition of the pump. So I guess it could be anywhere from zero to 30%, and I'm not sure how they would react to someone tampering with their little tamper, uh, little pieces of tape that was on the pump. And they're saying that they wouldn't know until the final inspection is complete. So anyway, if you really wanted to get a replacement low profile pump, it would be anywhere from $1,299 less the discount if you wanted to have a trade-in or a, uh, if you had a trade-in available. But 
my feelings towards uh, oilless vacuum pumps is very clear. I don't think they're a good product to have. I think an oiled scrub, I think an oiled vein pump is really the best way to go when it comes to freeze drying. But anyway, thank you for your time in this little venture. I wish I had some better news to give you for those individuals who have the low profile uh, oilless scroll pumps. But the pumps are so complicated and require special tools and special bearings that they really are not serviceable. They're going to be a disposable pump. So sorry, I wasn't able to uh, provide more additional information. But thank you for your time and please subscribe so I can continue to send you videos such as this. And as always, please go forth and freeze dry the world and I will send you another video soon.